Alright everybody, welcome to a game called Twisted. It's a dark fable, like, horror story that takes place in some spooky-ass woods with a spooky-ass monster or something. So let's just jump right on in. Thank you for downloading the Twisted demo. Some assets, screens, or text may not be as they will appear in the final version. I'm a boy. Sage is a boy. I'm alone. The trees around me twist towards the sky the way the flowers in mother's window box do in spring. The branches seem unnaturally long, unnaturally dark. The moon's in the sky, but none of the light seems to reach the ground. When I look up, I can see it through crisscross fingers of bark, but staring straight ahead, I can barely see an arm's length in front of me. There have been times when no one else was with me. Even still, they were always just in the other room, just out the door, just down the street. Few friends, small family, watchful neighbors. Not anymore. I'm alone. The air smells like dead leaves and something sour I can't name. There's no sound here, not even birds. It's so quiet, every rustle of my clothing makes me flinch. But I'm not scared, and this place, being alone, is the best thing I could possibly be. I look over my shoulder and stare hard at the way I came. If I squint enough, I think I can almost see my mother's face, hear her voice. Go. Go. You must. You must go and you must not come back. I never thought I could regret confiding in my mother. She's the brightest woman in the village and the kindest. That's why the elders rely on her. That's why I know I can trust her with anything. Yet, I am alone. I face forwards again, eyes scanning the trees ahead. I'm alone. I'm safe. The woods are enormous. It won't find me. I say this aloud, needing to hear the words. Then I say it again. It won't find me. I take a breath and don't think about what will happen if my words don't hold any truth. What will I do? Where will I go except not back? There's nothing outside the village but the trees, the dark, and the monster. My next steps feel like I made it while wearing bricks tied to my shoes. My cloak weighs a thousand pounds. My bag weighs a thousand more. My hand itches. I cradle the appendage to my chest, keeping my eyes averted and instead focusing on not back. I'm thirsty. There must be water. Or maybe not. Does a monster need water? There are no birds, no squirrels. I haven't even heard a single insect. It's like all life in these woods has fully submitted to the beast that lurks in its depths. I miss the birds. Let's just save right here. There we go. The, the, the dots in a horror game? That's always bad. Never trust the dots. I'm thirsty. I don't know where I am, but it doesn't matter because it's not back. My hand itches. I don't scratch. Why does your hand itch? Did they brand you or something? How long have I been walking? The moon has risen and fell and risen and fell and risen and fell. I'm tired. I'm afraid to stop. I'm thirsty. I'm alone. The sound of crisp leaves crunching underneath my feet is my only companion. It reminds me of early autumn mornings, the satisfying ache of chores, and him. Is this how he felt before he died? No. He wasn't alone. I'm lucky, for now. When I stop being lucky, when it finds me, maybe I'll see him again. The teachings say we'll all meet once more in the after. The elders are never wrong. Unless they're the ones that kicked you out for whatever reason, then maybe they're wrong. You hear that? Oh, there's footsteps. <laughs> I stop walking to try to listen for water. There's got to be water. I strain my ears, flare my nostrils. All I smell is the unfamiliar. All I hear are footsteps. The muscles in my body tense in bunches. My calves, my thighs, my back, my arms, my shoulders. I'm not alone. The footsteps get half a beat faster and I force my body into action. I'm thirsty, I'm tired, I'm not alone and if I don't run, I'm dead. I have never been very strong or very fast. I work with my hands, delicate work, crafting. My hands are deft tools. My feet are clumsy blocks of flesh attached to the ends of me. 
I shouldn't be so startled. I knew what I would find coming into the woods. My mother knew what I would find, and still she pushed me out of the gates. I can't cry. I have to run. The footsteps behind me get faster. Then there are footsteps in front of me. I skid to a halt. There's nothing outside the village but the trees, the dark, and the monster. Growls replace the footsteps, the two sets of footsteps. I look left, right. Left is a log, right is a thin thicket of trees. I go left. Scrambling inside the dark bark, I scrape my knees and elbows. I don't feel the pain, not beyond the confusion. I can barely feel fear. There's a hole in the log and I press my face to it. The space I was standing only a few moments ago explodes into life. A huge dark something slides into view, massive spikes jutting out of its back, its head, the monster. It's grotesque, it's horrible, its hulking figure is broader on top but it walks on all fours. It brings with it a terrible stench. Finally I realize what the smell has been this whole time. Blood. Then, from the other side, another creature bursts into view. It slams into the monster like it has no control over its momentum. The bark around me trembles and I realize it's from my body shaking. The creature is huge, dark, spiked, grotesque. Horrible. Another monster. Another monster? The two monsters scuffle over one another before seeming to lose interest, and one lifts its nose towards the moon. In the dim light, I see a glint of sharp, sharp fangs. Monsters. I'm not alone. It takes only seconds before I realize they're looking for me. The one not scenting kicks its feet against the ground and then turns and looks directly at the log. I'm not in here. Nope. It's somewhere. I'm not in here. Our eyes meet. What I can see of its eyes in the dark. A pinprick of mottled yellow inside great glaring pits of black. I close my eyes. Honorable ancestors hear my prayer. Friends past, I come to meet you. The footsteps come closer. The ground shakes. A terrible howl fills the air. It's a howl I've heard in my nightmares. A howl I've heard in the village walking through the streets, pumping water, faint in the distance, a warning. Should I quick save again? Let's quick save again. The monster. No, another monster. Three of them. How many more are there? I open my eyes and stare out the hole. I'm just in time to see a creature larger than both of the ones before barrel into them. The area quakes with the force of it. The three go crashing into something out of my line of sight, but I can hear the sound of a tree bowing and thrashing to the ground. The growling grows louder, wet. I have to move. I wriggle free of the log, dragging, pushing myself free. When my lower half is out, I crouch behind the log and risk a glance over. The larger monster sinks his teeth into the, another's shoulder. It howls loud enough to make my ears ring, and I scramble back, quivering so hard I can't feel the ground. Blood, black in the moonlight, spills on the leaves. The larger monster rips into the, to the other two like a dog into a child's doll. With the last of my strength, I push myself up before it can do the same to me. I'd be like, nope. <laughs> I run and run, and the only footsteps I hear are my own. Monsters. Monsters. Three, maybe more. They eat each other. They would eat me. Well, that's just, they're probably starving, because all the other animals are like, I don't want to be here, because there's like 80 monsters, and then they're like, I guess we'll just be cannibals then. One monster was bad enough. One monster who stole people from their beds at night. One monster lurking in the woods, taunting us with the knowledge that the only safe place is behind the village walls. Now there are monsters, plural. There are monsters and my mother told me to go and not come back. I want to believe there's a good reason. I can't. Oh, the dots again. I smell water, faint, but it's there, a stream. Maybe the same one that runs through the village. It smells like hope. Eventually, I have to stop running. My legs are numb, and the clumsy appendages on the ends of them are throbbing in protest. I glance down, and my heart stops when I see a large hole in the side of my bag. I drop to my knees, taking inventory. One loaf of bread, one apple, one piece of jerky, one bar of sweet chocolate, an extra pair of clothes, my needle and thread, my flask. It's all there. Relief floods through me so suddenly it starts spilling out of my eyes. I inhale sharply, but can't get enough air. I have to be quiet, but I can't stop. 
alone. I'm alone and I'm not safe, and my mother told me to go and not come back because my hand itches. That's a weird reason to kick your child out of home. Your hand itches? Get out of here. We don't have any itchy-handed people in this village. I pick up the flask and take a long drink. I was supposed to save it, but I can't breathe. The lukewarm water wets my parched throat and gives a little clarity to the jumbled thoughts beneath my antlers. What if he's infected? And that's where the monsters come from. I'm able to quiet. I scan the trees around me, but there are no footsteps, no growls. I'm lucky. I can't afford to be so careless again. I take my bag and move over to the thick tree, curling up at the base as if that spot is any safer than any other. I pull out the needle and thread and begin to take care of the hole. There's a leaf falling. The repetitive motions slowly settle my shaking hands. I prick myself on purpose. It's familiar. It's good. I do it again. Instead of watching the spot that itches, I focus on the drop of blood smeared over my thumb as I work. I take my time. When I finish, all that's left is more walking, more trees, more fear. I'm so tired. I want to sleep. Wouldn't that be safe? Or would that be safe if I could find a place? No, I should keep moving. Exhaustion is difficult to bear, but it's not death. Does it even matter? There's nowhere else to go. This forest is my world now. Um, both of these decisions seem like a bad idea. Mm. Let's do keep moving. Yes, it matters. I can't stop. I won't stop, whether I have a destination or not. Come on, Sage. I take a deep breath and push away the pain in my feet, my ankles, my everything, drawing my cloak tighter around my shoulders. My mother wouldn't have sent me out here to die. I repeat that to myself with every step I take. If I repeat it enough, I might start believing it. Keep moving. Keep breathing. It's just two things. Keep moving, keep breathing. Move, breathe. Move, breathe. Hmm. I quick save before this, so... Hopefully that matters. My feet go numb. I'm no longer walking, just floating in a shell that only just has the strength to keep me going forward. I press on. When I feel like I can't possibly take another step, I reach into my bag and fish out the bar of chocolate. As carefully as I can, I break off a piece from the corner. Sweet chocolate melting on my tongue scrapes off the top layer of my exhaustion. I take a swig of water, a deep breath, then I keep going. Eventually I have to sleep. Not for long. Never for long. All I know is moving and breathing in trees. Then not even that. When the trees end, there's moonlight illuminating the space beyond like the forest leads out to the stars themselves. There's nothing outside the village but the trees, the dark, and the monster. Yet ahead there are no trees. Behind there is not just one monster. Here the darkness ends. The elders were wrong. I can't remember the last time I wasn't moving, but when I reach the edge of the trees, I stop. Ahead are ages of brown-green plains, all soaking up moonlight. It takes longer than it should to realize what also lies ahead, or rather what doesn't. Monsters. It feels like jumping into the abyss as I walk out of the forest. All I can do is keep walking. The air is sweeter here. Uncharted territory. When I look behind me, the solid line of trees glares back cold, calling me. I face forwards and continue on. A few amorphous shapes in the distance gradually become more familiar. Buildings. Buildings? It's not the village. It can't be. There's no wall. The further away I go from the world I knew, the more frightened I am. You must. You must go, and you must not come back. I've reached not back, certainly. Mother couldn't have known about this place. Buildings means people. How can they live here so close to the forest with no wall? I barely notice the walk to the vi I barely notice the walk to not the village. Okay. I feel like I'm facing those monsters again, staring into dark eyes and dark jaws. Closer, closer, but no one comes out to greet me. I don't understand. Half of the buildings are falling apart, roofs caved in, wood rotted through. 
The knot village is much smaller than the village. I could see the edge of it just standing at the perimeter. There certainly aren't people here. I'm exhausted. Moving and breathing, just two things, but I feel like I've spent a year trying to stay away from the monsters. Next to me is a hut. I can hardly call it a house, with no door, but it's mostly intact. I step inside. It's mostly empty. There's a moldy pallet that might have been a bed at one time. There's grass poking up through the holes in the floor. I sink to my knees, barely managing to untie the cloak from my shoulders. I use the hood as a pillow and wrap what I can around me. In seconds, I'm... Super duper out. I wake in stages. First, I feel something tickling my nose. Then I recall that I'm not at home in my bed, and the realization sends a light tremble through me, just like it has every time I have it. I set up looking around. The hut looks slightly more inviting in the daytime. My flask is digging into my hip, so I move over and suck in the stale air. There's nothing for me to do but explore the strange place I found, or maybe I should call it home. Shelter is better than the trees and the leaves. The Knot Village is mostly built like a grid. It reminds me of the village in an odd way. The roads are mostly dirt, just a few stones interspersed throughout, rather than the crisp cobblestone streets back home. My footsteps disturb the dirt, and it feels like I'm trudging on something that matters. Further in, there's a large circle of buildings, and, the, and in the center, the largest structure yet. Were it not for the lines of age running down the walls, I would have thought it was made recently. I reach out and touch the stone. It feels like sacrilege. I can't ever go back to the village. No one's ever left before. No one who ha wasn't taken by the monsters. Monsters. No one's allowed to leave. No one can No one can leave. My mother risked punishment by the elders by getting me through the gates. I'll never know if she was caught. More rested, less panicked, I believe that my mother had a reason for pushing me out. My hand itches. Finally, I pull off my glove, staring hard at the black rash spreading over my wrist. He's infected. You're never supposed to scratch. Mother said anything about what, or mother never said anything about what you are supposed to do, though. She's a healer, but she didn't even give me a cream to rub over it. Something like what she used on him after he fell into the po the poly bushes. I made him gloves to wear after that. He never took them off. Something like a smile shifts my lips. My hand itches. I sigh and pull the glove back on. A distraction. There's plenty to distract me. A whole new world. I walk to the doors of the stone building, reaching out and pushing. My first try does nothing but make dust flakes, or makes dust flake down onto my nose. I push again harder and the door grinds open. There are rows and rows of decomposing cushions spread out over a floor patterned with stones. They might have been brightly colored once, but now they're all dull, dusty. The wooden pillars supporting the roof have elaborate carvings in them. The most interesting thing is the wall near the front, where it feels like the altar would be. There are larger-than-life pictures drawn on it, words and glyphs that are strange to me. I at once recognize them and don't. They look as familiar as they do odd. I squint and move closer. Separation. Maybe. It could be break or maybe destroy. There's something wrong with the symbol. I look over the rest. Here. That one's clearly enough. Or that one's clear enough. Pride or maybe honor? Family or acquaintances or mentors. It's frustrating. None of the lines are quite right. Foolishness. Who are you? Uh, someone who's gonna totally steal your fucking clothes. Hello? No! <laughs> no to be continued! <gasps> that was fun! I like that. I kind of want to go back to my, like, choice, though, and, like, uh, and sleep and see what happens. Let's do that real quick. Yeah, Fable Soft Studios. That was good. You drew me in and then you kicked me in the face. Like, da, that was a demo. You met a new person. That's what you get. Sweet. Okay, I'm gonna skip this because I want to go back to my choice. Let's load. Uh... I mean, 
I quick saved what three times? This one? I wish I had a picture of where it quick saved. Yeah, it's loaded. Or do I just have the one? Load? Oh, there. Okay. Um, is it this one? This is before I went to sleep, right? No. It's going the opposite. Weird. Okay, I think it's this one. Yes, okay. Water, 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 water. Oh. Uh, skip. Let's find out what happens if I actually go to sleep here. Let's sleep. No, it doesn't matter. If I keep going as I have been, I'll die anyway. My body needs rest. I stand, finding that keeping myself upright is much more difficult than before I sat down. On a whim, I turn and look up at the tree. Not far above me is a hollow in the twisting bark. Large, dark, I'm tossing my bag up before I make a decision whether to use it or not. I hear my bag land with a hollow sounding thump. I can't see it from where I stand. The space must be deeper than it appears from the outside. Good. The monster won't find me, unless you're like crawling right into its own hidey hole. The monster won't find me. I reach up to the edge of the hollow, jumping up to give myself the boost I need. My arms support my weight for only a few seconds before I crash back to the ground with a grunt. Come on, Sage. I jump up again, this time managing to keep my grip for longer than a few seconds. I pull myself up and it feels like my arms are going to quiver apart from the strain. Come on, Sage. You've come this far. You're alive. You're alone and there are monsters, but you're alive. You haven't come this far just to roll over. Come on, Sage. With a, grass, or with a gasp, I drop into the hollow, landing on my shoulder and knocking my hip, but feeling nothing but relief. When I open my eyes, I'm shivering, and the faint light that had settled over me like a blanket has been replaced with darkness. I fumble for my bag, the flask, and instead feel a puddle. The top must have come open when I threw it. I expect to feel distraught, but instead I don't. It's fine. I smelt water earlier. I'll be fine. I'm alive. For ten heartbeats, I quiet my breathing and listen to the world outside my safe spot. Quiet. I'm alone. I take only the flask and risk leaving my bag as I clamber out of the hollow. My feet hit the ground harder than I expected, and I stumble, the wrappings covering my soul slipping up into my instep. It doesn't matter. They've hardly, there are hardly any protection against the twigs and pebbles. After taking one last chance to listen, smell, and look, I start off in the direction of the water, nose to the wind. The water grows stronger the further west I go. The moon is back in the sky. It gleams down on my face like I am an old friend. It feels agreeable tonight. Or it's feeling agreeable tonight. I can see more than four steps ahead of me. The trees are thinner here. My stomach aches for food, but I haven't dared eat what little I have in my bag. Not yet. Not until it feels like my body is eating itself from the inside out for lack of sustenance. The way to the river is blocked by fluffy bushes as tall as me. It takes a while to get there, not because it's far, but because very, every so often I have to stop and make sure the footsteps do too. Finally, the gentle burbling of a stream reaches my ears. They twitch towards the noise, and the rest of my body follows. The side of the water lifts the weight that had settled on my shoulders. My cloak is a feather. I collapse next to the stream and dip my entire head inside. Despite the way the woods smell, despite what lives here, the water is crisp and cool and even better than what we have in the village. I surface with a gasp and shake my head free of the excess water. After getting to rest, I feel like I've stepped through a thick fog and come out the other side, bruised but not broken. I take my flask and dip it in the stream. Once it's full, I drink a little more, but before refilling and closing it carefully. Thirst slaked, I turn to look at the moon. Oh! Instead, I see a figure further down the stream bed, great spikes jutting from their body, silhouetted in the moonlight. I stay very still. It doesn't move for four heartbeats. On the fifth, I turn and scurry away, keeping low to the ground. When I reach the hollow, I climb back in and press myself against the tree bark, like if I do it hard enough, I might be able to merge with it. I don't move into the light of morning. The trees end. One moment they're there, the next they're simply not. That hits harder than multiple monsters. The sudden daylight without the cover of trees is blinding. The 
The sun is quivering in the sky. I'm tired, sore, and I stand at the edge of the world. It takes minutes before I can convince myself to step out from under the trees. One step, then another, then ten. I run out into the brown-green plain spread out in front of me, eyes as wide as I can get them. I need to see everything. In the far-off distance, farther than I could walk in seven runs, there are more trees. Closer, closer, on top of a small hill, I see buildings. Buildings. It's not the village. It can't be. There's no wall. I thought there was nowhere else to go. Now that there is, I feel more frightened. I know I shouldn't. The elders were wrong about the monster. They were wrong about the forest. Buildings means people. How can they live here so close to the woods with no protection? Who are they? There's nothing outside the village but the trees, the dark, and the monster. It takes the better part of the day to reach the buildings. Most of them are falling apart. The Knot Village is mostly built like a grid. It reminds me of the village in an odd way. The roads are mostly dirt, just a few stones interspersed throughout, rather than the crisp cobblestone streets back home. My footsteps disturb the dirt, and it feels like I'm trudging on something that matters. Further in, there's a large circle of buildings, and in the center, the largest structure yet. Okay, so this must, like, just go back around. Um, yeah. Yep. 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 I hope your mom's okay, dude. Seriously. So our character must be infected with something that the village does not like. I wonder who the him is. Is it like his like ex? Like someone he was in love with? Or like his dad? Or what? A distraction. There's plenty to distract me a whole new world. I walk to the doors of the stone building, reaching out and pushing. Okay, so this is when he in goes inside that building. Uh, yep. Rose and rose, yep. Yeah. Brightly colored stuff. Wood pillars. The wall. Yep. Okay. So yeah, he's just like having trouble like understanding the words because they're all like weird. Alright, yep, and then we turn around and she's there. Okay. I wanna play more. That was a good demo though. It was really like engrossing. I wonder if the monster's gonna come back into play though, that's what I wanna know. Because it would be really cool to come face to face with one and try to talk to it or something. But who knows, right? We'll see. But I hope we get to learn more. Maybe I'll, I'll wind up getting this one because it's so interesting. Oh, sorry, I had to stretch. <laughs> like my body just took over. But what did you guys think of Twisted? I mean, if you if you liked it, definitely play it. Uh, just for the funsies, because the demo, you know, you, you can get it for free on Itch.io. But uh, yeah, the it says Kickstarter coming September 3rd. Uh, you know, it's October, so that means that they've already started this, or maybe it was like from last year, I don't know. So hopefully that they, they're getting stuff done on this game, because I'm really interested in actually playing it. And I hope that you guys are too, and like, maybe uh, if I get the full game, you know, of course I'll start over and go from there, because they said like, the assets and stuff for like, the actual full game would be probably be different than what we're seeing here. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing it if I get the chance to because it seems really cool and I like the fact that I get to be a deer person because that, that just sounds awesome I'm really curious about the infection we have I wonder if like you change into one of those monsters or something when you get infected but I guess we'll see right but I hope that you guys enjoyed I definitely enjoyed this I love um, visual novel you know video games I love story driven stuff so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this and just as much as I did I love you guys very much, and I will see you next time. Bye!